Hello, I'm Brittany. Welcome to Book Club. These are my sisters, Rhea and Ashley, and of course, Sarah on the other side. And um, since she's the one, oh, my hair is all messed up. Uh, since she's the one who nominated the book, I'm going to pass it on to her to start. Hi, I'm Sarah. Okay, <laughs> I hate going first. Problem is, I liked this book. So I read it all in one day, three weeks ago. And now I look through to remember names, but um, so bear with me. Details are a little bit fuzzy. Um, so <laughs> I say I like the book. I like the premise of the book and I did not like the main character. Let me just say that. She annoyed me like crazy and I'm just like, your goal in life sucks. I get that it's a different time period and you have to like put the family first and whatever, but she's literally like, spends the opening chapter talking about how she's like, I must marry for money to save my family. And then she's like, I love you too. You're so rich. And then the guy's like, wait, what? <laughs> she's like, oh, I said that out loud. <laughs> Oops. Awkward. And then he's like, oh, well, I only like you for your beauty, so I'm out of here. Bye. And that was really awkward. Oh, my gosh. Oh, so many awkward, cringy moments. Um, Mr. Fredericks is annoying. <laughs> I mean, he has his, like, moments of being cute and charming. And then he has moments where you're like, were you raised? in a barn what the actual heck he has like zero social skill for someone who's supposed to be like business savvy and like you know whatever like wouldn't you think he would be more social socialable i don't even know like he can't even conduct a conversation without irritating people and being rude and it's like really and then he just throws money at problems and thinks that they will go away because that's how he rolls. And I was really annoyed with her. Hold on, what's her name? Uh, Althea. I was annoyed with Althea's not realizing that he was the one with the money because it was, in my opinion, pretty obvious from the get-go that he had money. Maybe not that he was supplying the money for his cousin, but I kind of picked, I guessed at that, but it was really obvious that he was rich and people kept on like hinting at it to her and she was like painfully, intentionally almost oblivious. And I'm like, girl, just because he's a merchant's son does not mean he's poor. What the heck? And she's like, oh, it's so nice of them to take in their poor aunt and cousin because their uncle died and he, they must be so poor and destitute. And I'm just like, she knows absolutely nothing of the real world. And it can, like, they keep talking about how she's smart and she's like, you know, worldly aware of things and i'm like no she's not she's not she's not anyway um i don't know what else to say other than that i guess um but it was funny that the castle fell off the cliff at the very end like i could picture sitting there and watching it just like fall off the edge and being like it's almost like a fresh start because um, one way or another, she was being tied to the fate. Her future was tied to the castle and with it falling off the cliff, she was given a chance at a fresh start and everyone in her family was also. They were thinking their only future was be because of the t castle, but then it ended up being what helped them from having a good future so that was kind of cool and sad but also and the dog part <laughs> when he gives her the dog and then she thinks the other guy what's his name um 
sorry i really lord boring of course <laughs> she thought it was from him and then he was just kind of like i don't know ask him he's the one i picked it out and she still thinks that it was him even though he pretty much i don't know if he straight up says it but he was implying that like no it was him and then she's just like oh it's so sweet of you anyway like she just wanted to see what she wanted to see and there was no convincing her otherwise even though all of the clues were pointing in the the other direction and it was like really so yeah she was really <laughs> annoying <gasps> I can't be the only one who thinks that, right? Like, <laughs> honestly, it was like, girl, open your eyes. Everyone is like practically spelling it out for you and you're just so blind. Someone else share something. I honestly, I think there, overall, it was entertaining. Um, it had its high points and it had its annoying Did bits. Did it have its high points? I particularly liked the part with the bread. That was the only part I can remember. That was at the big. Okay. <laughs> I personally think that this. I agree with you. Her, the main character, is annoying. I, I personally would equate her to Emma from Emma by Jane Austen. Oh my gosh! You could. Do- I think. I think she. I was- think. Um. I thought the beginning was like kind of confusing because like I told Brittany that like at first you start and you have your misconceptions about the book so you're slightly confused of where you start the book but once you get past that point looking back I'm like that it it was such a hilarious way to enter the story um and an interesting way to show the character her you know yeah but i also like i kind of agree with her annoyance of like you're only marrying me because i'm pretty so why is it not okay that i marry you just for your wealth because it's true like he didn't love her he didn't esteem her he didn't have respect for her he just saw her beauty Mm -hmm. i mean the way he like was constantly like scanning her was so creepy. What? Okay, I shouldn't oh, say yeah, constantly, right. but he like did look he, at, yeah, yeah. I forgot about that. Yeah. Uh, I think I think I definitely think that she wasn't as clever as she liked to think she was, and she I, was I painfully even, oblivious I, to I don't think everything was a point around where her. She claimed to be clever. I don't think she claimed to be clever. People just said I that. think it was hard to believe she was 17. Mm-hmm. Because... Did she act 17? I don't think she did. But, you know, you can go back and forth because she was a little whiny, like a 17-year-old might be. Mm-hmm. But then she also wasn't. And then she also had to... Like, she was 17, and she was basically running the house, not her mom. Yeah. Like, she had a lot of responsibilities You know, like, that kind her. of stuff, where you're like, she's 17. Which I don't get. I don't... Like, her mom was sweet and naive, and I hated the stepsisters. I don't understand how she was naive, either. That part... I mean, like, you know? Yeah. And I... So, like, I... Not to be mean, but she was kind of weak, because... Her 17-year-old should not have felt like the fate of the entire family, the fate of, what was it, 37 people, she said, that was her responsibility. It shouldn't have been her responsibility. It should have been the mother's responsibility. Well, and apparently, Athea, she, she was emotionally tied to the castle way more so than anyone else Mm -hmm. including her mother and i was i was a little like so you know i was i was curious the whole time like i don't know where this is going basically i was like 
mm, I don't know. Is she going to actually find someone? Is she going to realize, you know, a different way to happiness? You know, stuff like that. Um, mm -hmm. And I did not see the castle completely falling apart. That, that, I mean, yes, they were, like, poking at it, but I'm like, no. It can't fall apart, right? If anything, I thought it was just going to be, like, oh, the, you know, the problem with the roof. Like, I thought, okay, there's the problem. The problem with the roof, the, the you know, that right. happened. And not, not the castle yeah. is going to slide into the ocean. Ocean, right? Yeah. The yeah. Right on the water. Off the cliff and into the ocean. Yeah. Because, um, so that part was like. I can't believe that just happened. And, uh, yeah, I totally saw Lord, Lord, like, I liked him kind of a little bit at first, so there was some things that he said that was actually, you know, mm, but then, like, he all of a sudden was just like, not there, you know? Like, he was there, but he wasn't there. Yeah. So we're, like, disengaged with him. And so he was off, whatever. And I thought it was obvious that he was going to choose Charity, personally. Well, right. Like, he got, he spent more time with her. I mean, I knew that she... I... Yeah, that part was like, oh. But then I was like, when he proposed, and how he proposed, and all that bit, and he was like, sad about it, I was like... Okay, so you're going back and saying that you really don't like her, even though you spent all this time with her, and, like, okay, interesting. Mm hmm I was confused at the, specifically when the castle goes into the water, and Frederick says something like she's squealing and she's not squealing you know like there wasn't a point where she, she described that there was a squealing she said she heard a s screaming or some kind of noise and she opened her mouth but nothing came out and then he said that you know she was screaming or whatever so I was really confused about that part, cause I'm like maybe he thought she was. I'm like, screaming? was it her? Was it not her? Did she not exactly acknowledge that it was her? But she's like, but no words are coming out, or nothing's coming out, you know? It's cause she went through that process in her head where he said it, and she she heard it, and he said it, and then she's like, but no. So I I don't know. I mean, it's a very small detail, but I was kind of confused. And, yeah, it was hard for me to believe that she was 17. I kind, I mean, I like, I didn't hate her, but I was just like, not in, like, I didn't like her either. You know, I was like, she's a person. It was, eh. It was like, I, you know, it's like, you obviously go on the ride with her through the story so you like bear with her throughout the whole thing but you don't like relate to being her or see yourself as her going through the story you know uh, Ash hmm. your favorite part was the bread mm -hmm. when she when she told the cook to slice the bread very very thinly and then they didn't have butter to put on it um, I, I heard that, she, uh, the only part that I heard was her telling the cook to thin it, slice it thin, and then put bread, um, and then toast it lightly, but not burn it, and then put butter on it. I didn't remember the part where they said they don't have any butter. Uh, also, she fed all the sugar to the horses. Or, she made all the sugar into cakes, and for some reason they were gone. Because people ate them. People ate the cakes? She had unexpected guests that ate the cakes. Um, I thought it was funny. Okay, I shouldn't say funny. I found it kind of amusing. The part where, um, they go to the stones, and he's in the, the, 
the thing, and she had just gotten her brother and the dog out, right? And she's all making sure that her what, brother is okay. What was he in? Some kind of, um, like, it was confused. a flooded mine shaft. So he was in the mine, but it was, wa- I was so confused. It was like, a, I guess, like, um, one of the, the holes, uh, that event holes that was full of water or something. I don't know. I didn't fully understand it either. I, I know. I was like, he's stuck. Yeah. And it has something to do with that, you know, mind shift and whatever. It, yeah. I was, yeah. And he's like barking orders. He's like the 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 person who fell into the bush, and then the the, the mother of that, and then like because he he doesn't know their names, and he scolds or Athea, he d- or he at least doesn't like actually yeah, really want to use them. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Like, he's like, you're pathetic. You just fell into that bush. So you, the bush person. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Which I thought was funny. Why, and, why the heck would you... F- whatever. Yeah. And and then he's like, you should have looked after your brother better. And she's like, first of all, these are our names. Use them. And then she was yelling at him because he w- it was his idea to bring her brother. Yeah. And she's like, you're the one who promised to take care of him. You're the reason you should have been taking care of him better. And I think it's so funny how, like, even on the ride there, she was, like, yelling at him and, like, excuse me, no, no, you, like, don't, I don't know. It was, I thought it was funny, but also, like, kind of annoying, but funny. And then how he, like, actually listened to her, and then the uh, boring was just like, oh, wow, he never listens to anyone. And I'm like, but that's not true. When he was poking at the pictures or out on the balcony at the beginning when they first meet. Or, you know, kind of around the time they first meet. I'm like, okay. Which is so rude. Oh my gosh. But, so he he's tells like, him to stop and he did. He's literally, like, picking at everything and basically breaking them. Yeah. And then he's like, oh, shoddy workmanship. And then he walks away. Anything will break if you put a knife to it. (laughs) Or, you know. What the heck is wrong with you? Mm Mm-hmm. Like, oh, and then you send, you know, some money and some people to fix it later? Yeah, he's like... Oh, that makes it okay. Oopsie, my bad. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Yeah. He... Honestly, um, I was telling you, like... I just, I... I, I thought he was weird and like eh, but I la- but I laughed at him. He was funny. Yeah. What was the part that I told you that I was started to ship him with Athea? Uh when she yelled at him? But the names. Oh, that's right. She I'll- was like I ship that. <laughs> I do. And Ashley's like, what? <laughs> I I have a I clearly have a problem with shipping people who don't get along at first. <laughs> I'm like, oh, you two hate each other. I ship it. I don't know why. I'm weird. But I think hate I also turned love. I also think that like I love how brutally honest they are with each other. So I don't know. But, like, I wouldn't say it's my absolute favorite pairing. I just, I enjoyed their dynamic. And I love how, like, he's literally, like, in his proposal, he's like, let's just agree to argue with each other for the rest of our lives, or however he put it. And I'm just like, I love that. I laughed, like, (laughs) the entire time. Because, because... Thank you. Uh, I laughed the entire time because I thought, <laughs> I just, I just like, oh my gosh, this guy, she's like, what the heck is happening? And then I'm like, oh my gosh, he's proposing. <laughs> His proposing was rather pathetic. I was like, laughing. Dude. I laughed so hard at that. My side hurt. I mean, was... And in fact, it still hurts from laughing well, so hard. And I was surprised that she even came out and said, like... So you can't propose to me? You know, whatever. And he just kind of laughed at her and then, like, continued. Mm Mm-hmm. And (laughs) it was, uh, it was funny because it's like he didn't want to admit that he actually had feelings for her. Mm -hmm. So he, like, set it up as a business proposal first. Yeah. And 
he's like, would you honor me? Uh, no, that doesn't work. All right, scratch that. If you uh, married me, this is then then this your, is how it would benefit you. Then your you. mom can can marry that guy because for some reason, Mister Bumbo something. <laughs> I thought his name was weird, so I don't. It's hard to remember. <sighs> Which I'm confused about. Mm-hmm. It's like he has what what what. Like, because she's taken care of, he's going to be likely to marry his her mom? I don't understand that. Yeah. I, I, I felt like that was more of just, like, him trying to find a reason to marry. Because, like, he laid out... He's like, yeah, that guy's poor. Which I'm like, why is she acting so, like, shocked? Because she knew that after they got engaged. So, or at least I felt like she was acting obtuse to that. I don't know. And then, like, so he's like, yeah, so by the way, I'm rich. And, like, and then he he was, like, trying to convince her of his wealth and why she should marry him. And then that was just, like, and your mom, you you clearly, like, because she was saying how she's worrying about the future of her mom and her brother. Mm-hmm. And so then he's like, we'll be fine because yeah. after you and I get married, then they'll be okay to get married. And Yeah, your mother you will know. be taken care of. Your brother will be taken care of. Everything is fine. Yeah, I... Oh, um, my gosh. I he, laughed so hard because he was like... Uh... Let me, yeah, so he tried the honor, you know, whatever, and then he's like, scratch that, and then, you know, going to the, okay, well, they'll be, it'll benefit your mother and your brother, and then Mm -hmm. he's like, you know, continuing that way, and then she's like, okay, then what will you get? Mm -hmm. And then he's like, I knew it. I knew it. Like that, uh, yeah. And, uh. And then he's like, well, mm-hmm. when I went back to wherever, one person, lab, whatever. London for the business thing. Yorkshire? They left, he, the, the castle's in Yorkshire, I thought, and he went from Yorkshire to London. They're not in Yorkshire. I thought they were in Yorkshire. No, Yorkshire was the closest place to do the, the framing. Is that where Yorkshire oh. come from? Yeah, Yorkshire Terrier. Anyway, sorry. Um, anywho, and she, he's like, I found myself, no, with you in my head and arguing with me. And I, <laughs> I'm just like, oh my gosh, dude, this is ridiculous. I know. <laughs> and then I was trying to think of like where that was in the timeline, and I just thought of like, like his behavior it when he came back, beginning. yeah. And I'm like, first of all, how could you be so in love with somebody? But already? he didn't know. But he didn't and know. Then, but like, and he then obviously his mom was like, "Uh, dude, you're in <laughs> love in with her." Are we? Are we? Okay. <laughs> and <laughs> I thought that was funny because he's like, "What is happening?" And then she's like, "Hmm." You love her. What? No, she's like arguing. Like I was. She's, she's annoying. Not even, she's not even here, and we're arguing. <laughs> <laughs> that was so funny. Oh my gosh! Like seriously, dude. Like just the image of him being in a business meeting and then like arguing with the chick that's in his head. I'm like, oh yeah. If if and you were like, the other guy definitely thought he was crazy. <laughs> obviously, yeah. like, oh, he's it's funny because like like the way they were talking about how the meeting went. You're like, I I was like, huh, something happened at the meeting, but like it didn't like it was like whatever. And then to hear like that's what it was. Um, but yeah, we'll. We'll stop our turn. We've been doing it for a bit. Yeah, your yeah, turn, Brittany. <laughs> I mean, Sarah. Wow. <laughs> wow. I don't even know what to say to that because that was a lot. But I guess most of what you said I agree with. Like, I was on the same page because it was just 
a whole lot of funny nonsense and then random like what are you even thinking right now so my wi-fi keeps on buffering so that took a little bit longer to watch than it should have um i don't know if i have anything else to add other than i hated her stepsisters like you know you i went into it with like an open mind of like you know it doesn't just because it's stepsisters doesn't mean they're gonna be evil stepsisters right and then it was like yeah i hate them because they're like part of the family but they're like you can't have our money even though you can't feed us and it only if it benefits us directly when i'm like you literally don't have food that would benefit you if you had food I don't understand the mindset of how that doesn't benefit them. And so then when she released the mice in their bedroom to try to get them to move rooms so that they would have to get the roof fixed because their room would be in one of the leaky bedrooms. It's like, dang girl, you're vicious. That's, that's like a heavy level prank right there. And how her mom's just like, I'm not even going to ask. Because I know you did something. But I'm not even going to ask. And she's just like, I don't know. And she's like, you can take care of it. That's fine. I don't know what's going on. I'm like, girl, you're just giving her free range to torture these girls. Like, I get they're stingy. And they're like, oh, we have to protect our own interests. Like, our futures. Our, we're, every time we give you money is like taking money out of our children's mouths and it was like okay that's a little extreme but sure I guess I can get where you're coming from but dang that whole situation was like hilarious and yet like evil like whoa could you imagine telling someone about that and then I would feel like I would probably think about differently about someone if I found out that they put rats in their sister's bedroom to get them to move bedrooms multiple nights <sighs> like wow okay you're a little evil that's very creative and justifies the means I guess I don't know yeah so what did you think of that dynamic like the sisters and or sister-in-laws not sister-in-laws what do you call them stepsisters that's the word yeah i thought it was really interesting how um charity right was like basically trying to steal boring from her even though she knew boring liked her more and she was like everyone knew that she boring was invested like interested in Althea like the whole town thought they were basically courting because he would go out of his way to spend time with her and then Charity would like nose her way in and like force her way in and you were saying how he kept spending time with her but it was like no Charity was literally stealing him from the groups and yeah he kind of went along with it and he would complain about it later though like he was voicing that he didn't like it and kind of asking people to like intercept it and stop it from happening but then eventually it was just like well it's too late now i might as well just marry this one because whatever so i felt like it wasn't as intentional on his part it was just kind of like charity pushing her own interests painfully like I can't believe he actually fell for it because she was being so annoying about it. And then he just was like, sure, you work too. Since you have money and the girl I actually like doesn't. Even though I don't know if he actually did like her, he just kind of, I don't know. It was more like he was amused by her and she was pretty. So anyway. <clears throat> Yeah. yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Unison. We 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 practice. No, that. the same person. Um, like in the beginning, when the stepsisters 
got the mom and Athea out of the carriage and made them walk in the rain. I was like, what the heck is wrong with you two? Literally, they could say, you leave our house and go find somewhere else to live. They could do that. Because, they're. I mean, they're not their responsibility. No. So, them letting them live in their house, they should be a little bit more grateful I can't believe they can't they can't rub two brain cells together and go, Oh, you don't have money and uh we're eating and we're doing all this stuff, in other words, absorbing your money that you barely have. Yeah. And we have a we have all of our dad's money because he you know. Yeah. And I get that they clearly hate Athea because of how beautiful she is. Think about it. They clearly are embarrassed by certain things about how poor they are. So I'm like, you have money and you could maybe do something about it without breaking the bank, yeah. without putting all of your money into the estate. You could do bare minimum to help your family and your current living situation until you get married. You know, like it's it it doesn't take a genius to link that. So I'm like, while well, it like wasn't your marriage ex- prospects are at a very low. Yeah, at, at the very least for that reason, because if a suitor came to the house, they may not believe that they actually have money or something. You know, like so it would be in their best interest to help the situation a little bit. And so when she did the mice thing to get them to pay for it, I. I didn't feel bad at all. No, I didn't. I was like, I was like, they deserve you, it. You realize they deserve it. Like the fact that they were like, oh my gosh, the roof is leaking, but it's not our problem. Mm-hmm. Was like, oh, so it's only your problem when it's directly your room leaking mm-hmm. because oh, it's not gonna lead to your room leaking or it's not gonna lead. To the walls caving in in your room, or possibly worse, you know, Mm -hmm. or falling off a cliff, (laughs) you know, like seriously, they clearly do not have brain cells to rub together, and I did. The other one didn't have any personality. No, like I don't even remember her name. No, she like literally didn't matter. Um, and like. Yeah, totally, like, the whole clear... I don't think he was, like, in love. I think he was on his way to being in love with Athea. And the sister coming in, and then, like, how both sisters were acting when they came in and he had to go and ask for permission and all of that. Like, it was just, like, I I think it was half... She was, like, a cow now. (laughs) Yeah. I order you around because... You are now my little dog, and I am your master. Yeah, but I I can't help but think half of it was because she wanted to be married, and then they could leave the castle and leave them because they clearly don't get along. But I think it was also to spite Athea because they could see how interested she was in him. I got your guy. Yeah, and so they're like, like, really, do you want to be the second woman? Like, he doesn't actually like you. At all. Yeah. You know, you really want to live your life with this man who you may like or may love. I don't know how you even feel about him. But you're going to force him to marry you? Not really force him. Yeah. But I did think it was a bit, like, at the beginning, I thought that Athea was a bit presumptuous about, like... How much money he had? Well, how much money he had, but then also his intentions towards her. I felt like he at the be- straight up was like, "I love you." What? Without until he it. said that, What's until he said that af- before that. Yeah, I mean, like- it did happen fairly quickly. Yeah. But I felt like even before he said that, she was basically planning their life. Like, yep, I've chosen him. That's who I'm cho- I've chosen. Wasn't he there for a few months? I don't know. Cause I, I actually said thought that. it was very soon after they met at the... At the ball? Yeah. I thought she said that th- they'd been there for a few months and she was hoping he'd stay longer, but they left. 
That's Frederick. Yeah. Oh. I don't know who that is. <laughs> is that his cousin? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. The guy who proposed at the end. Mm. To her? Yeah. Ew. <laughs> I don't like Frederick. I don't know anything <laughs> about him, but he didn't even want to be there. <laughs> Does she marry him? She does. Yes. The main character? Yeah. Yeah, he built he rebuilds the castle but further away from you know, in a safer spot. And that's gonna be their summer home. Mm hmm And then her mom marries Bum whatever the heck is the Mark Bumboshuk. Mark I can't even say Mark that guy. Whatever. And, uh, and then, Mark you know, obviously Please? he adopts her brother, which I'm like, what? Ad ad adopt? Okay. Yeah. So he gets her, the, his money, maybe? That's Wait, another what? thing. He comes on her, she's looking at her ruined house, and he's shocked that she's crying? I'm sorry, I but know, who would be like, sitting there looking at their house literally falling into the sea and not be crying? Crying? Yeah. And he was like... Oh, oh, um, please don't cry. Oh my gosh! No, I can't handle this anymore. No, no more crying! He's yeah, like, I'd rather you be mad at me. And I'm like, him? I he's thought like, I thought, boring. I didn't realize you were gonna be sad. No, that was him, not boring. Yeah. That was not boring. All I heard was boring. don't cry. Boring <laughs> married, was marrying Charity. Yeah, yeah, I thought he still said these things. No, yeah. that was. That, Frederick oh at the God, end. I really right before that. he proposed. Yeah, and, uh, he was like. Uh, what you're like you didn't realize she was in the middle of crying when he like approached her and then yeah he was like oh you're crying oh my gosh my wait God. you actually care about your home oh yeah that's right and what say that she was a person or a human with feelings or yeah yeah, that yeah she, that? that's when she, that's when she said that yeah mm -hmm. and he's like oh shoot she does have feelings <laughs> Like <laughs> which is like, dude, really? Uh, which, of course, he knew she did. But apparently he didn't know that she had feelings towards an inanimate object. Oh, my God. Oh, it's she only been her like home poor. her entire life. Right. Yeah, and she's poor. <laughs> and they literally have nowhere else to go. Yeah, right? They have they no money to guess. start over. They are basically, like, yeah, in, a, in a sense, they just lost everything. Like, basically... She could have feelings and emotions for your house, because that's one thing. That's, you know, you have those memories and, you know, that connection between the house. But then there's also the everything lost mourning, you know? She mm -hmm. was deaf. It was a mixture of both mourning, obviously. Mm hmm And, uh, yeah. I can't believe he thought that she would be mad at him for that yeah like why would she be mad at you like, like this isn't about you dude like yeah what when, when did you become in the equation like you just dropped her off yeah at the house. And, like, yeah yeah it, it just like it didn't make sense but that's what kind of made his whole proposal even more pathetic and laughable yeah and Brittany totally thinks that they're elizabeth and darcy i said they're like I used the equivalent. I didn't say they I are. I literally, when he was introduced, I said, oh, I think he's going to be like a Darcy character. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, and I totally sensed that he had money. Like, and I'm like, mm, I think boring. Because there were similarities compared with the two of them that reminded me a lot of Darcy and Wickham. Maybe it's because I've literally dissected... <laughs> Pride and Prejudice, so I know Yeah, like, I totally agree free, with you on that. A yeah. A few, couple few word phrases that might have been correlated, that might have been from Jane Austen, because, you know, I, I obviously we've been working. Mm hmm. And, uh, it's there. I knew it. I was like, yes, that was a direct quote, even if it was four words. <laughs> <laughs> I had to get the crazy look. <laughs> What crazy look. <laughs> yeah, and I, I like, I don't know. Like, I didn't get why everyone kind of just assumed 
like who had the money and who owned the estate and all that like I, I felt like it was very like it was never as far as I remember it was never stated outright who owned it except for by Athea and that it was just like where did you get the information uh as far as Lord Boring yeah he owned the estate oh did he it was his uncle's oh, okay he didn't have much money with the estate because of his mom who gambling gambled away yep. the money what there's actually an english saying for that um land rich land rich and cash poor yes you yeah. have that's british it's um it's very common in britain in britain um because like there's a lot of really big estates mm -hmm. and you can have a big estate but that doesn't mean you have a lot of money because let's face it those estates Absorb. cost a lot of money to maintain to live in and you need servants and you need people to clean it you yeah and yep yeah. yeah it takes a lot and to do obviously that. the castle had 37 people depending on it and you're like whoa well hold up mm -hmm. where the heck are these 37 people that we didn't know about i mean we knew about like jacques and well they had servants didn't they yeah, yeah. the the oh. butler and the cook, the cook didn't her family and the scullery maid and the scullery, and maid. Kind of and the scullery maid and then the tenants and yeah the tenants didn't and then they all the live there or like were depending on them yes their, their money yeah. yes uh, well, not just the food and the well, no, they don't feed them. No, because they pay them and that feeds them. <laughs> no, um, they're just they're their landlord mm -hmm. essentially. So if they were, you know, say go bankrupt or lose all their money and whatnot, they couldn't afford to have mm -hmm. tenants because mm -hmm. they couldn't afford to have their land, and therefore they wouldn't have their houses and livestock and everything anymore. Yeah. Um, I, forgot, I was gonna say something. You're kind of leaning on me. Sorry. All right, we'll kick it back to Sarah. <laughs> yeah. So I don't really have anything else to add. I don't know. <laughs> I was like, oh, you're back to me. Okay. I'm just over here, like, crocheting and listening and nodding. And Daniel's laughing at me because I keep talking to you guys even though you can't hear me. And then when it's my turn, I'm like, did I have something to say? What did I say before? <laughs> I don't know. <gasps> anyway. Um. Sorry. I'm tired. <laughs> I need caffeine. It's been a long day. It just rained. Um, uh, are we ready for nominations? Since we kind of went through the whole book already, we <laughs> practically dissected it. Oh, I remember something I was going to say. <laughs> Stop. You're not helping. <laughs> oh, so, I know in the beginning it was like from the inspiration of... I captured the castle meets Pride and Prejudice, so it did have a lot of the Darcy and Elizabeth dynamic going on, where it was like the love-hate, fighting, bickering relationship, and then I agreed with Brittany when she was like, she's like, Jane! Um, and when she was trying to set up Fredericks with her friend, uh, what was her name? Mm. Hold on. There's like a little key in the front of the book with everyone's names and where they belong. And I was like, oh, that's nice. Uh, Vincy. Miss Vincy. Anyway. When she was trying to set them up and I'm just like, girl, stop being such a Jane. Why are you doing this? And then she's like, oh, now they have feelings for each other. And now I'm mad about it. Why am I mad about it? This is what I wanted. And I'm like, girl. Stop. Like, that whole story, sub story about Miss Vincy was really interesting and random. I felt like, like it just pushed the agenda of 
the jealousy factor and then being like oh she's not even an option on the table at all she has a kid and she's like got this whole backstory and we're like oh wow i did not see that coming she did not seem that type of person not sure if there's really a type for that to be you know taken advantage of by your art teacher and then get married and then he leaves you because your family disowns you <laughs> like because he only wanted your money like that whole thing where she was obviously naive i guess that's she was very naive and then she was taken in because she was naive and then she was destitute or not destitute but like lost everything because of it and then she's living with her family again i'm like that really stinks for her the whole story and then her son almost dies like girl you just have no luck at all at least your parents are rich i don't know I felt bad for her and then that was the one thing that made me like mr fredericks was the way that he handled his friendship with her and how he just kind of almost was like a big brother figure in her life where he just was like there for her with no strings attached and yeah i don't know and appreciated her art and was like let's figure out a way to help you become a great artist or for people to know you're such a great artist and he, yeah so now that we've talked about everything in the book <laughs> Are you ready for nominations or what do you want to do? Yeah, we can do nominations. Honestly, Miss, we, Miss we forgot Vixie. about her. We really I like, forgot about her, but she was the sweetest lady. Yeah. That you're like, oh, story. yes, you could get either one. I don't care who you get as long as you're happy. That's what I was like because she deserved yeah. to be. And then I'm like, oh, dude, she's got a kid. What? And then I was like, you have a jerk of a husband who's dead now? Yeah. Like, okay, you totally deserve to get remarried to someone who actually loves you, and you love him, and then, you know, like, then you can actually be with your son. That's when I kind of started, like, oh, maybe her and Frederick. But, yeah, that totally, like, I knew Frederick didn't actually love her mm -hmm. like that, but... He at least would take care of her. Who is Frederick? Oh my gosh, the guy that you didn't know it was a guy that existed. The cousin? Yes, the cousin. I don't understand how Ashley. you refer to him the cousin. The boring cousin. Mm. He's the cousin because that's the only scene that I remember him in is the one where he's like, oh, why are we here? And he, he, the, then, then boring is like, because girls. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh, we got that. <laughs> that did not happen. I don't, I don't remember that at all. <laughs> how is it the one part I remember and you don't? <laughs> that did happen, sort of. It is exactly what happened. That's not exactly what happened. Uh, like, I don't remember anything remotely to do with that. All right, what are y'all's nominations? Okay, uh, Ash, what's your nomination? I don't have one. Do you want to forfeit your nomination? <coughs> what does he mean, forfeit? Not have. What does that mean? Not nominate. Or do you want to nominate a my, book? The hair here. You can re-nominate books that you touch have my already... hair. Look, it feels uh, weird. It feels weird. You're being weird. Okay. <laughs> you can, All right, You can re-nominate books that you already nominated that we didn't choose. Yeah. But I do have a nomination, so this will give you time. Uh, it's also by... Patrice Kindle. Oh, the author of this one? Yes. Uh, it's called Goose Chase. Her name is Alexandria Aurora Fernando. Fernando? Fernando. Fortuno. Let me see this. Uh, yeah. Fortuno. 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 <laughs> I don't know. And she is as lovely as the dawn. But that is the om only one of her problems. There's also the matter of those 
three magical gifts of treasure bestowed on her by a mysterious old woman. And King Claudio, the cruel, wants to marry her for her beauty and her wealth. And so does his rival, Prince Edmund of Dorolo. Those who those are two more problems and worst of all she is locked in a tower with a griddle of iron bars and several hundred tons of stones between her and freedom some days alexandria wishes she looked like a pickled onion clearly the only thing to do is to escape and with the aid of her 12 darling goose companions that's precisely what Alexandria does. So begins the adventure of Patrice Kendall's beguiling heroine. Her her flight will take her to strange lands and land her into perilous 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 situations all of which the plucky Alexandria views with a weird with weird Rye, with rye, rye and witty spirit. Here is a sp- sprightly tale, sprightly tale of magic and romance, in which these geese play a most surprising role. <laughs> it sounds like a mix between Sleeping, uh, a, a mix between Sleeping Beauty and uh, Rapunzel. What? Yeah, because she, her name is Alexandria Aurora, and she's as lovely as the dawn. And she has three gifts, which yeah. Aurora gets as well. What the heck? All right, could you hold it while I read mine? Yes. Wait, you read that entire thing already? That's the synopsis. <laughs> you have f- two minutes. No, okay. I didn't even understand any of it. The body in the library back... Beg- by or oh, wait, body. That sorry, that's the wrong one. <laughs> <laughs> the wrong title. The body in the garden <laughs> by Catherine Shalem. One in the library versus Shalem. the body in the library. <laughs> yeah, I, that's that's Agatha Christie, and that's actually wait, a good one. Christie, but um, oh, yeah. this, this one is this not. not. This but, one is oh, not. But she, the title that she originally said was not. It was Agatha Christie. I feel London. Like I would enjoy Agatha Christie more than those other ones. Really? I've never read an Agatha Christie. She's good. She is really good. Obviously, she's one of my favorite authors. Let me trim the back of my head when we're done with her. Okay. London, 1815. Although newly widowed Lily Adler is returning to society that frowns on independent women, she is determined to create a meaningful life for herself, even without a husband. She's no stranger to the glittering world of London's upper crest. At a ball thrown by her eldest friend, her oldest friend, Lady Walter, she expects the scandal, gossip, and secrets. What she doesn't expect is the dead body in the Lady Walter's garden. Lily overheard the man just minutes before he was shot, young, desperate, and attempting blackmail. But she's willing to leave the matter to the local constable until Lord Walter bribes the investigating magistrate to drop the case. Stunned and confused, Lily realizes she's the only one with the key to catching the killer. Aided by a roguish Navy captain and a mysterious heiress from the West Indies, Lily sets out to discover whether her friend's husband is mixed up in blackmail and murder. The unlikely team tries to conceal their investigation behind the whirl of London's social season, but the dead man knew secrets about people with power, secrets that they would kill to keep hidden. Now Lily will have to uncover the truth before she becomes the murderer's next target. And that's that. So the title, "The Body in the Garden," by Catherine Shalem, 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 something. It's I don't know if you can. It's backwards. It's backwards, but like, no, that's not working. <laughs> Ash, you ready, or should we send it over to Sarah? Sarah. Okay. Hi. So. First of all, Daniel has a nomination, recommendation, request, whatever you want to call it. Nomination. 
So I'm going to read his first. Uh, it's called My Travels with Miss Kennedy. Mrs. Kennedy. Um, do, 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 do. Back down to the description. Um, while preparing to sell his home in Alexandria, Virginia, retired Secret Service agent Clint Hill uncovers an old steamer trunk in the garage, triggering a floodgate of memories. As he and Lisa McCubbin, his co-author on three previous books, pry it open for the first time in 50 years, they find forgotten photos, handwritten notes, personal gifts, and treasured mementos from the trips on which Hill accompanied First Lady Jacqueline Kennedy as her Secret Service agent. Trips that took them from Paris to London through India, Pakistan, Greece, Morocco, Mexico, South America, and three glorious weeks on the um, El no, um, Amafia Coast. I'm saying that totally wrong, but during these journeys, Jacqueline Kennedy became swan of her husband's and America's greatest assets. In Hill's words and the opinions of many others, one of the best ambassadors the United States has ever had. As each newfound treasure sparks long suppressed memories, Hill provides new insight into the intensely private woman he always called Mrs. Kennedy and who always called him Mr. Hill. For the first time, he reveals the depth of the relationship that developed between them as they traveled around the globe. Now 90 years old, Hill recounts the tender moments, the private laughs, the wild adventures, and the deep affection he shared with one of the world's most beautiful and iconic women. And these memories are brought vividly to life alongside more than 200 rare photographs, many of them previously unpublished. Okay, it keeps going, but there you go. All right. And then mine, if it went through, because I have to read it off of his. Uh, it's still loading. Give me one second. Um, my Wi-Fi is so slow, especially while I'm on Marco Polo. <laughs> Hold on, I'll be right back. Okay, it loaded. So mine is called Deception Point by Dan Brown. From the number one New York Times best-selling author of The Da Vinci Code, Angels and Demons, and Inferno Now, a major film, Directed by Ron Howard, starring Tom Hanks, blah, blah, blah. A thriller about an astonishing NASA discovery that uncovers a vicious conspiracy leading all the way to the White House. A shocking scientific discovery, a conspiracy of staggering brilliance, a thriller unlike any you've ever heard. When a NASA satellite discovers an astonishingly, astonishingly rare object buried deep in the Arctic ice, the floundering space agency proclaims a much needed victory, a victory with profound implications for NASA policy and the impending presidential election. To verify the authenticity of the find, the White House calls upon the skills of intelligence analyst Rachel Sexton, accompanied by a team of experts, including the charismatic scholar Michael Tolland. Rachel travels to the Arctic and uncovers the unthinkable evidence of scientific tri trickery a bold deception uh, that threatens to plunge the world into controversy but before she can warn the president rachel and michael were ambushed by a deadly team of assassins fleeing for their lives across desolate and lethal landscape their only hope for survival is to discover who is behind this masterful plot the truth they will learn is the most shocking deception of all. Also, Daniel wants to share a little bit about his book, so here you go. Okay, great. Okay. So the guy who wrote this, the My Travels with Mrs. Kennedy, um, was on My Pros, the Dirty Jobs Guy, uh, podcast the other day. And he was sharing some stories about the book. He's like 94, I think is what he is. Really old. Anyway. Uh, so he was telling a story about a uh, king in, I want to say India, but that's not right. Like Southeast Asia, somewhere in there. Anyway. Um, so while they were there, a war started. 
and the king had to go out with the army and whatever. So the palace guys were putting on this party for Mrs. Kennedy. Um, and their culture, they don't drink alcohol. Well, the servers were going around giving out hors d'oeuvres and whatever. And he said, someone brought this brownie up to Mrs. Kennedy. And she took a, took one and the secret service guy took one. The secret service guy said, hey, these are pretty good. What all is in this? The guy told him and he's like, these will make you very happy. Make you have a very good time. So basically what happened was they unknowingly ingested pot brownies at this palace. So there you go. There's my story. That was your... That's my story. <laughs> okay. I'm like, that's awesome. And now Ashley's turn. If she doesn't think of one, she could just, you know, we have four because of Daniel. So she could take his or not have one, whatever. I don't know, you know what I'm saying. That's why it was taking so long because she doesn't know what she wants to nominate. Um, so we can just do that, Ashley. I don't know. Or do you want to go look on that bookshelf? No. Do you want to okay. nominate a book that you've already nominated before? No. Okay. Uh, so does this mean that Daniel wants to join book club? Because he's, no, he's he off. Please really, welcome to. He wants us to read his book. <laughs> and then, <laughs> what? I, I don't know. I'm just asking. Yeah, Daniel. This is a shame. Are, are you a part of the party, too? Yeah. And, seriously? Oh, sorry. Like, pot brownies? Mm -hmm. Like, pot I brownies? I totally, when you said brownies, I was brownies? like... Did you I thought it was going to be poison or something, and then it was pop brownies, and I'm just like, what? <laughs> well, he, you know, the way you set it up, I kind of saw that coming. <laughs> That's going to random. Are you going to add that on your thing? That sounds a little suspicious. Don't be suspicious. Okay, let him answer. Yeah. I'm speaking to the child, because she told me to speak to the child. Um, it's a book I was wanting to read, but I don't know. Do you want to read it with us is the question. If you pick mine, I'll read it with you. Well, that's... That. <laughs> He's like, I'm not reading I'm not Maria's. reading Maria's book. <laughs> no. Not doing that. Sorry. <laughs> Why did you soul out... So, what, soul out? Um, single, single out? out mine. <laughs> 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 Can you tell we're uh, related? Okay. <laughs> and say what you had to say with, before I put it, turned it on. I said, "Why does he have? Why can't? Why does he get to skip the girly books? But I don't ha get the right to do that." Well, because they're not all girly. They are all girly. We just didn't happen to pick, you know, Percy Jackson last time. Uh, or like Harry you Potter. wanted to. Well, Harry Potter was the first one last time. I never nominated Percy Jackson. Did I? I'm pretty sure you did. I did both. Yeah. I'm pretty sure you did. Okay. I think you did Sea of Monsters. Oh. No. Yeah, that was the second one. You did? Because I already read the I first one. I don't like... One. I actually... Are, you... Shoot. Did I finish Harry Potter? I don't think I finished it yet. I think I'm still on books... Uh... I'm pretty sure you've only, you finished Order of the Phoenix. Yeah. No. Uh, in the books? No. I haven't finished Goblet of Fire yet. Oh. Mm-hmm. I'm still reading that. I forgot that I was reading it because I have ADHD and I forgot that I was even reading it. I haven't read Order of the Phoenix yet. But anyways. Um, so, we were also talking. It's funny because my book is actually set in Regency. So, yeah. So okay, kinda, uh, you know. so who uh, votes first? Zoe. Uh, Zoe isn't here. Do you know who you're going to vote for? Because I don't yet. It is the stairs. Uh, no. Ash, who are you voting for? It's the stairs. 
Uh -huh. She votes for the stairs. <laughs> the, the the one that Sarah nominated sounds like something we would enjoy. Or Wait, the, which the, one did she nominate? It was like a... It was one about conspiracy theories. It's kind of like National Treasure. And, like, they had to do, they had to do like, decoding, kind of. Yeah. And it's spy stuff. Yeah. Sounds like something you would enjoy. Action. Mm. Although there sounds like a love interest guy. Oh, God. I didn't get that. Dude, there was a guy. There was they a male. mentioned a male in a the A male stuff. figure. Like, that don't okay. mean nothing. She, they did it together. I'm pretty sure that it, Yeah. I'm just saying. Ew, I'm just saying. Um, I shouldn't have brought that up. She, now she doesn't want it. Oops. Great. Yeah. No, I just mean in general. I don't like stories with a lot going on because, as you can tell, I have a very short attention span. I cannot focus. Do you prefer like a short story? No. <laughs> I prefer my stories oh, that shoot. I write. I don't like reading. Okay. Are you going to vote? No. Okay, Sarah. You're up for the first vote. <laughs> I vote for Britney's The Body in the Garden, not the library. <laughs> Which, when you first started reading, I was like, no, we already did that one. That didn't do that one. What? And then you fixed it. I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, that's my nom my vote. Mm, yeah. Do you want to vote, or is your vote yours? Uh, I'm not officially part of it yet. He's like, so I'm not, I'm, I don't get a vote, even though. Unofficially, his vote is his. <sighs> you no! <say> no! <laughs> yeah. Who is this too? <laughs> what is this? This is Sarah. Her phone is dead. You can't be wasting her battery like this. Use your own phone. We can switch if I if it's necessary. No, because you have to record it. She has to record it all in one. Oh, never mind. I'm a liar. <laughs> I'm a stupid. <laughs> oh, are you on? No. <laughs> she will not do it. Are you hold? It's almost like you're holding her at gunpoint. <laughs> I said if she's going to do it, then she needs to say it to I already her said it. Face. I already... She, she messaged. I already messaged her. No. Messaged whom? Sarah. About what? At my high school dropout. Because <laughs> she has a dropout. <laughs> you want to drop out of the book club? It's a snake. It's a snake? It's a snake. <laughs> it's a snake. <laughs> is it just please, Sarah? Like, um, your foot? This is Sarah. Is it just Sarah? It's Sahara. See? Do not touch my I'm phone. I'm going to No, I will. You no, know, oh you know I don't like feet. <laughs> <laughs> Who does? Uh, creepy people who work at Nickelodeon. Oh my gosh! <laughs> she asked. Are you ready to vote yet? Um. Wait, no. You. This is just directly to Sarah. So go on the sister. No, this, this is, is book, book club. club. Ah, you talking about feet on book club? <laughs> I'll probably edit that out. Okay. Mm. Possibly. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. If I feel up to it. If I feel like I taking know, the time yeah, yeah. to do it. Um, I vote for mine. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Who do you vote for? Basically, uh, my vote doesn't matter because <laughs> this little girl over here. <laughs> Come on, Ashley. Am I the deciding factor vote? Or? Yeah, you are a matter vote. Well, it doesn't matter because if I vote... For if you Daniel's vote. or Maria's, then it's just one against two. It's two I didn't against. Vote. I could. I didn't or, vote. Uh, but then it'd be two against two, and we'll it would be because Daniel's vote and then Ashley's vote. Oh, so that's two right. for Daniel's if you did, and then two for mine. Well, then Sarah's and Maria's will don't have votes. So if I voted for Sarah's or Maria's, then it would be one on Daniel, two for yours, and two for Maria. Or wait, who are you voting for? I didn't vote. Well, it did, yeah, exactly. It'll be one v two. What are Come on, y'all! This is taking too long. What's your vote? Um, because your vote. Daniels. Okay, so two votes for Daniels, two votes for mine. Okay. Now you pushed my, the now my, away from the wall. Now my vote actually matters. Wow. <laughs> but it, it always matters. 
It didn't before because you were in the lead <laughs> with that one. Anyways, um. <sighs> How long can, can can we do like a, a how long is what b the books? Okay. Let me see. And I want to know what's what's the name of Daniel's book? Uh, eleven hours and twelve minutes for mine. Okay, Daniel's uh the traveling with. Yeah. Uh, five hours and eleven minutes. Mine it. Wait. Do we need mine? No. Mine didn't have any books. But just in case. Uh, six hours and sixteen minutes. Woo. What's your vote? I vote for Daniels. All right. Daniels. It How is. How long is Daniels? What is it called again? Eleven hours. Five hours. Oh God. Traveling with, um, Jackie. Or Mrs. Kennedy or something. Wait, what? No, that was Sarah's book. No, that was Daniel's. That was Daniel's. Sarah's was... But Daniel's son's book was about, like, a garage and picture frames or something. <laughs> what? So, does that mean Daniel's book won? And, yeah. Ashley was correct-ish. The intro was talking about the guy who wrote the book found the box full of memories in his garage or attic or was it garage? garage. I guess it, yeah, yeah. So she's right. It was just like a random point, but okay. So I guess that's the book. All right. Uh, thank you for joining book club. I hope you enjoyed um, it. She asked if if he won. <laughs> no, you're ruining the outro. <laughs> I'm sorry, but you didn't clarify. That she you, knew that. She said she it. She said, I, it, "Does that mean that Daniel won?" Yes, she, Daniel won. Yes. But also, what you didn't say what the book was called, Sarah. Traveling with Mrs. Kennedy. No, I'm. Or Jackie. It's not come up yet. So ask her. What was this okay. Daniel son's book called? Daniel. Son's that that he won because he won, which means he has to join book club now. <laughs> Look, it's Texas. Can you see it? Okay. My Travels with Mrs. Kennedy uh, by Clint Hill. You were close, but the wording was off. That's probably why it didn't come up. So, congratulations. You're in our book club. Oh, fantastic. And I just spent the last video ripping out all of the hour and a half of work that I was doing during our video. Lovely. Crochet life. Okay, bye. All right, thank you for joining book club. Uh, see you next time. Bye. What? <laughs> see, <laughs> what? Why are you doing that? Because <laughs> it's too funny to not do it. <laughs>